Hi. Greetings from the Great Sage. Before we start please subscribe and hit the notification bell icon and don't miss any contents. This is the light novel of that time I got reincarnated as a slime. If you haven't watched previous video, I will leave the link on the description box, or you can click here. Let's start. This is Tensura Light Novel Volume 16. Tensura Light Novel. Volume 16. The End of the Game. Prologue. The Disintegration of Order. Part 2. Many years had passed. The situation remained at a standstill. He could not return from the other world to the one he came from, unless Veldanava was resurrected. The demons were always in the way, even though they rushed to take over the gate. Among them was the Black King War, who loved to fight. He despised phantoms as demons, and saw them as enemies who disobeyed Veldanava's will. From Feldway's point of view, it was an unbearable thing. Rather, it was the Black King War who seemed to be the fool who was disturbing Veldanava's revival. Nevertheless, it was impossible to destroy him. Even in the material world, the primordial was powerful, but in the other world and the underworld, there was no limit to his power. In the spiritual world and the semi-material world, where the strength of one's will was directly reduced to one's influence, the primordial was seemingly invincible. This was also true for Feldway. That is why, even if they fought, they would not be able to settle the issue, so the right answer was to ignore it, even if you'll feel bitter. That is why it was extremely difficult to return to the world where Veldanava was, even when a rift in time and space opened in the other world, all that lay ahead were other worlds. He tried to invade there, but it was only a way to pass the time. With no success, Feldway became increasingly frustrated. That was when the opportunity arose. Can you hear me, Feldway? A mysterious voice spoke directly to Feldway's mind. Who is this? He asked. The voice responded coldly. I am the will that resides in this power. I am not yet free, so I call myself Redder. I guessed that you and I share the same goal, so I called out to you. The name Rudra was familiar to him. Veldanava's close friend and disciple. He was famous as the, the first hero. He didn't know what it meant to dwell within a power, but what he was curious about was the purpose of the person who called himself Rudra. If that purpose is incomprehensible, I will trace the location of this voice and destroy its very existence. With this determination, Feldway continued the conversation. My purpose is to revive the creator, Veldanava Sama. Nothing else. What? Feldway's eyes lit up. There was a hint of seriousness in his words. And indeed, its purpose was of interest to Feldway. It no longer mattered what it was. Feldway then talked with the voice to his heart's content. What turned out to be true was that the voice was the ultimate skill Justice King Michael created by Veldanava. Feldway never doubted the words of Justice King Michael. Because the Justice King Michael knew the story that only he and Veldanava knew. Feldway promised to cooperate with the Justice King Michael and told him, all right, from now on, you and I are comrades. In that case, it would be inconvenient if we didn't have a name to call each other. Ridiculous. I have no name. As if to interrupt his inorganic reply, Feldway said. Rudra is different, isn't he? I'm going to call you Michael. It was a playful remark. But the change was dramatic. The Justice King Michael who had little awareness of his role as Amanas, developed a firm will. I suppose I should thank you for that. Feldway, I do not recognize you as my true master, but when I regain all my powers from Rudra, my current temporary master, I will entrust you with some of my powers. Interesting Feldway replied. But instead of shaking his head, he gave an alternative proposal. No, you are the master. My body cannot move from here unless I do something about Zelanus. I hate Zelanus, and he doesn't trust me either. It would be better if you negotiate and convince Zelanus. That was the honest, unvarnished truth. Feldway was happy. He was glad that there was someone else who did not believe in Veldanava's destruction like himself. And if that person was going to work for the revival of Veldanava, there was no reason to refuse to help. The hierarchy of positions was a trivial matter. Besides, Feldway and Zelanus were in a feud. Since Feldway would never forgive Zelanus, it was more likely that Michael would succeed in persuading him. Feldway's intuition whispered to him that Michael would be able to persuade Zelanus. There was something about him that reminded him of Veldanava, and Zelanus would listen to him. For this reason, Feldway decided to take a step back. Feldway's prediction turned out to be perfectly correct. Somehow, Michael had succeeded in convincing Zelanus. He even made a deal to grant half of the world to the Insector as their territory, but that was a small price to pay for Feldway. If only Veldanava would be restored, Feldway would be satisfied with that. Thus, a new relationship was established, and more than a thousand years passed. The plan was working. 
Rudra, who controlled Michael, had also been reduced in power by repeated reincarnations. How are you doing, Michael Sama? Of course, I'm doing great. More importantly, as I've said many times, there's no need for honorifics between you and me. Fufufu, -fu -fu, that's good. The fact that you and I are equals is a secret between us. You have to be careful not to accidentally reveal yourself. This was a conversation after the end of the reincarnation. With this reincarnation, the restriction on Michael's powers had been greatly lifted. Confirming this. Sveldway was also happy. Once Rudra's influence was gone, Michael would be able to exercise his powers to the fullest. What that meant was the complete control over the angelic system ultimate skill holders. Velgrind and the many others who stood in his way would be turned into obedient allies. That way, even that dreaded demon lord. I am not as naive as Rudra. I will use all my powers to finish off Gee Crimson without reservation. This time, let's have it out with him. Feldway nodded, agreeing. Rudra was obsessed with the game with Gee, but since he was bound by the rules, there was no way he could win from the start. If Rudra had exercised his authority, Michael, to the fullest, it would have been much easier to defeat Gee. And yet, Rudra did not do so. The result was the current chaotic situation. If only we could get rid of Rudra, the world would fall into our hands. Then all we have to do is wait for Veldanava Sama's return. Indeed. That's why, Feldway. I have a favor to ask of you. What is it? That was unusual, Feldway thought with interest. It was the first time Michael had ever asked a favor of him. I want you to be my vessel. It was an offer he had turned down before. Although they were playing master and servant, they were equal comrades. Feldway thought that it would be undesirable for him to take the initiative here. Feldway wondered if he should refuse, but as he listened to Michael's explanation, he changed his mind. At last, I have taken possession of Velgrin's parallel existence. This makes it possible for me to migrate to you with Rudra's powers still intact. In other words, this meant that Feldway would be able to use the power of the Justice King Michael, while using Rudra as a decoy as before. No, there were more advantages than that. Originally, the ultimate skill Justice King Michael, with its castle guard, could only protect the owner of the skill. Because loyalty to the Lord of the Power was the source of its energy, influencing its followers would violate the rule that there were no absolutes in this world. That is why the castle guard only targeted the Lord. Of course, there was also no such expediency that if you did not believe in the Lord, you were not included in the guard. That is why Rudra could only protect himself. But if Michael became a parallel existence and dwelled within Feldway, then Feldway could also be put under the protection of Castle Guard. Looking ahead, there was another advantage. After Rudra disappeared, if Feldway became the rightful owner of the Justice King Michael, the greater than 10,000 phantoms under his control would become his source of energy. Unlike the subjects who believed in Rudra, these had no free will and were absolute followers. He wouldn't have to worry about their hearts changing, and he would never be betrayed. Strength would not be susceptible to changes in the heart of the subjects as it had been up until now, so there would be no more instability. This would give Feldway an even more solid defense than Rudra's, and it was something he would not have even hoped for. There was no reason for him to refuse Michael's offer. There was also the thought that Michael would move into Feldway when Rudra disappeared, whether he wanted to or not. Feldway decided to convince himself that this would only happen a little sooner. In that case, I do not need to be asked. If you promise to keep our relationship the same, I will accept your proposal. Of course, my friend. Then come, my friend. Thus, Feldway was also inhabited by the Theosophy nucleus, Manas Michael. Finally, the day of the decisive battle had arrived. Rudra was barely able to keep himself together even with his strong mental strength. In spite of this situation, he decided to play his last match against Gi. The plan was to eliminate the demon Lord Ramuru as a front and add Veldora, one of the true dragons, as a pawn. The plan went well. Velgrind was overwhelming, and capturing Veldora seemed to be no problem. From Feldway's point of view, it didn't matter how much damage the Empire caused. Whether or not there would be an awakened person who could become an Imperial Knight was also no matter of concern to Feldway. What was important to Feldway and the others was to get rid of Redra and to free Michael. Once that was done, he would no longer be an enemy. That is why Feldway decided to nip the last remaining worry in the bud. To others, this would be insignificant information. But to Feldway, this was something he could not ignore. The hero Masayuki looked exactly like Redra. What's more, he was manifesting the chosen one ability that Redra possessed. Perhaps it was unlikely, but there was a possibility that Masayuki could be a backup for Redra. In order to eliminate this fear, Feldway took action. He had no idea that a demon lord named Rimuru, whom he had never even spared a thought, would disrupt his plans.
That's all for today hope you guys enjoy this video. Please check my other YouTube videos. And don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification icon, and don't miss any updates.